Hey guys, welcome back to another Thursday update video. So today's update is titled sixth birthday and quality of life update. As you guys all know, tomorrow is the sixth year that old school runescape has now been a thing. Six years of old school runescape. Can you guys actually believe in the game is more popping than ever before. So to celebrate, Jagex actually has a new little mini event you guys can do below Thaldor. If you guys remember last year for the five year celebration, they had all these huge things. They made this huge new area below Falador showing off, you know, the things that have come into the game over the past five years. And to celebrate the sixth year, they've showing off things that have, you know, come into the game the last year. They are marking the birthday with a small holiday event beneath Falador Party Room in the Underground Museum. And the artisans have opened the exhibition of major updates from the last 12 months, and a selection of RuneScape's familiar faces have gathered for a party. The cook from Lumbridge Castle has appeared in Falador to cater for this party, and in a nod to our oldest quest, he's going to need an assistant. If you meet him in Falador in the museum below the party room, and see what he needs, bring your own cabbage. At the end of this video, I'll show you guys how to complete the holiday event. So if you guys want to stick around till the end, I'll show you guys how to do it. It's very simple. It's a very easy holiday event. But as they say right here, bring your own cabbage. If you guys are watching this on Thursday the 21st, tomorrow on the Old School RuneScape Twitch channel, it's Friday the 22nd at 3 p.m. GMP, you can further celebrate Old School's sixth birthday party. They're going to spend this time to look back on the history of Old School. You can also expect lots of stats and information from the analytics team. To coincide with Old School's sixth birthday party, they're adding lots of new merch to the store alongside the live stream. You can expect some new pins and key rings from Angelscape, including a commemorative sixth birthday gnome child. <laughs> Cute. Today's first big quality of life update is the change to auto casting and attack styles. Now this update itself is really, really nice. I like this a lot. However, there was a really big bug that came out with this. I'm making this video after the bug has happened and after the bug has been hotfixed. But pretty much what would happen is that some people would be on an attack style that would train a strength or attack and then they would get defense XP. Some people would have it on strength and then they would get attack XP and beyond attack would get strength XP, etc., etc. So some people were actually gaining defense XP unknowingly and some people's attack styles were actually changed with the update to be on the defensive attack style and they would gain defense XP on, you know, an account that they really didn't want to gain defense XP on. However, that change has now been fixed. The temporary hotfix came out, the bug has been fixed as well. And what they're actually doing is if you guys have an account that was affected by this bug, you can actually submit your account to lose the defense XP. They, they will actually, you know, they're going to revert your account to how it was before. So it's actually pretty big. I don't think I ever really remember Jagex doing this for, for any account, really reverting XP gain on the account. So technically, while this bug should have never gone through in the first place, it is nice that Jagex is helping out the accounts that were affected by the bug and taking away XP. However, I'm kind of curious to see what their, you know, requirements are to have the XP taken off your account. You know, they're probably looking at your account and seeing if you gained XP in the past, you know, six or eight hours or so since the bug, you know, came out into the game and stuff. So if you guys were not affected by this bug and you asked them to take the XP off your account, it's probably not going to happen. But what do you guys think about this? We'll make that the question of the video. Interesting little bug to happen today. You know, these bugs happen every once in a while with these updates. Something big happens, and then everybody forgets about it. That's some next level EHP stuff right there. Now on to the actual updates of today. First up, we have a change to the auto casting system. Magical weapons which share the same spell selection will now remember previously chosen spells for auto casting. This means that you can switch between your various weapons knowing that the same spell will be ready for you when you switch back to your staff or wand. This option is not, however, available in PvP areas or in PvP worlds. So for example, let's say you're killing the Zamorak boss in God Wars Dungeon, you're using your Arc Light to kill Zami, and you're using your Master Wand to Blood Barrage the minions to heal back up. When you guys switch to your Master Wand, you won't have to, you know, click on the Autocast feature anymore, select Blood Barrage, and then start Blood Barraging. All you have to do is click your Master Wand, and if it's been previously selected, then it's going to remember Blood Barrage, which is really, really nice. The same thing now happens to combat styles. So weapons that share a category, for example, daggers, swords, and bows, We'll now remember the combat style that was used for. For example, if you guys equip a rune sword and select aggressive option before switching to another weapon like a bow and changing the style to accurate, switching back to the rune sword will retain the aggressive combat style. If you guys are a pure, double check your attack style upon logging in after this update. There have been some automated processes added into the game. We now have things like auto enchanting jewelry, so previously you guys would have to manually click on each piece of jewelry in your inventory when enchanting them. Now you guys have the option to just click one piece of jewelry, enchant it, and then everything else in your inventory 
will also be enchanted. The thing is, it's still kind of slow, so if you guys are enchanting the jewelry, if you're auto-enchanting it, sorry, it'll still take longer than manually clicking every single piece of jewelry, so that way it doesn't affect any XP rates, but it is a nice option for people who just want to click on one and just AFK and wait for everything to enchant, which I can appreciate. Three other processes are now automated as well, each step of creating the Serum 207s, filling watering cans, and splitting coconuts with the hammer. The magic skill guy now has the icons updated to be relevant to the spell beside it, and some other quality of life changes we have are that fossil and ancient wyverns now drop volcanic ash. Obtaining volcanic ash now is scaled to your mining level, so those that go from one ash at level 22 mining to six ash at level 97 mining. It is now possible to fill Gracolor's can using regular water sources as opposed to only being able to fill it by paying farmer Gracolor 20 tithe points, and rings of forging are now available to free players and can be bought from other players. Alternatively, you can give Murky Matt in the GE 250 GP for every ruby ring you would like to enchant. Game Blast 2019 is happening very soon. If you guys would like some information on it, I will leave a link in the description to this news post and you guys can check out the links here. And finally, to the end of the news section of the day, first up we have the PvP Rota switching over to period B, and other than that, there's really nothing worth pointing out here all this stuff is pretty much just typo bug fixes smaller things i guess there is now an npc that appears on veos's ship when it's moored in port serum to tell players where to find the corsairs and most importantly we have the message received when cracking eggs into an empty bowl was added to the game filter that is it for the old school runescape updates of today if you guys did enjoy these updates or if you guys have something to say about them of course don't forget to leave a comments in the comment section below and don't forget if you guys are watching this far to leave a like on the video if you guys do like these Thursday update videos, we're going to head over to RuneLight to see what's new on the RuneLight client. Since I didn't do an update video last week, we're going to start off today with the 1.5.12 release of RuneLight. And first off for this update, we have the addition of the old school RuneScape wiki feature on the client. So as you guys can see here in this GIF, you guys can actually click on the option below your mini map by clicking on the wiki and then clicking on anything in game that has the option to examine it or check it out. And it will automatically load up on your browser onto the old school wiki telling you all about the item that you wanted to check out. Also, if you guys want, you can right click on a quest now in your quest log, right click and go to the wiki guide or the quick guide, which is also very, very nice. If you guys are fans of the wiki quest guide or the, you know, if you guys like third age film, you guys can watch third age film too, of course. Yikes. Like I said, it's very easy. You guys can now just right click and check out the quest guide. The poison plugin now shows the time until next damage, cure, and the next poison damage in an overlay on the hit points orb. And the player indicator plugin now has an option on where to draw the player's names on the screen. In the 1.5.13 release, which is today, the item charges plugin now has an option to display info boxes for equipped charged items. The chat history plugin can now cycle through private message senders. By hitting tab, you guys can easily keep chatting with all of your friends. And finally, the agility plugin will now highlight shortcuts orange if you you guys don't meet the agility requirements to cross them and of course they stay green if you do have the requirement to cross them that is it for the runelight updates of today thank you once again to runelight for making our gameplay experience that much better we're now going to head on to the holiday update okay so this holiday event can be started in the Falder party room first of all they just decorated this place up really nicely happy birthday old school six years old tomorrow feels very good man all you guys need is three gp a cabbage and you can bring a stamina potion if you want you don't have to you're gonna be running around a little bit but it's probably not necessary i have one just in case, if you guys need a cabbage, you can just go to the cabbage patch here in the Falador farm and get it right there if you want. And don't forget the Falador party room is in the northeast part of Falador. So once you're here, all you have to do is climb down the staircase. And if you climb down, you're going to be in this massive kind of museum showing off all the updates, all the big updates, all the big moments that Old School has had in the past six years. Head straight to the middle just by running west. And you're going to see the cook right here. Some legendary NPCs are having a cheeky little dance party here. We're going to speak to the cook. Um, a terrible mess. Okay, I'll help you. Gives us a shopping list. Thank you. <laughs> we already have uh, the cabbage, which is nice. And then you can see right here, all everything you need, you can uh, just look at this nice little shopping list and you can see what you need. First thing we're going to get is the Brewer's Folly, which can be found in the Rising Sun Inn in Falador. So head back outside. I guess you can use a Falador teleport to quicken this up a little bit. But hey, nothing wrong with running through the nice museum, which I, if you guys haven't checked this place out, I would definitely recommend checking it out. There's a lot of cool things here showing off all the updates over the years. So we're going to head outside of the party room, head to the uh, Rising Sun Inn. I always forget what it's called, which is right here, right there next to the bank. So let's run over there and get ourselves a Brewer's Folly. Talk to any of the barmaids. I'll talk to Kaylee and ask her about a Brewer's Folly. Very bottom option. And we now have the Brewer's Folly. Easy. While you're here, we're going to buy an ale from her. What are you serving? Just buy an Asgardian ale. 
It's going to be 3 GP. You know, have an Asgardian Ale. And when you have the Ale, just drink it or empty it if you guys don't like alcohol. And then you see this water pump right here outside of the hairdresser thing just northwest of the Rising Sun. And use the beer glass on the water pump to get a beer glass of water. We're gonna head back to the cook now and give him the Brewer's Folly and the beer glass of water. We still need to get one more item. However, we have to go get a letter off of the cook, I believe. So we're gonna go get that off him. So head back to the cook by going back into the party room, head down the ladder, head west, and talk to the cook again. Okay, Mr. Cook, let's have these things for you. Give him the beer, give him the water. Very nice. So we're gonna talk to the cook again and say that you need a letter from you for the squire. There's the letter. Now we have to go to Thaldor Castle, where the White Knights reside, aka most of the Twitch chat. And we're going to talk to the Squire in there, and then we'll get the final item. If you guys have somehow forgotten where the castle is, it's right in the center of Thaldor. Just head to the courtyard here, and we're going to talk to the Squire. Alright, we're here. Let's talk to the Squire. He's usually in the middle or on the eastern side of the castle. Hello, bro. Oh, I just attacked. Oh, okay. Mr. Squire, I'm here. Uh, I have a letter for you. Have you got it? He reads it with interest. Da, 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 da. Very nice. Something in return. Close your eyes for a second. He fetches the wine, ensuring you didn't see where it's stored. And now we have Vivin's wine. Surviving. I guess it's surviving, right? All right, let's go back to the cook and finish this off. Back to the cook. Let's give him the final item. Baking a cake, and that's it. We now have a birthday cake. Which, wow. I mean... This is Fashionscape at its finest right here, lads. This is it. If you guys haven't done the previous birthday event rewards, you're going to get a lot more things like the cow outfit, prop sword, worship, the gnome child hat, stuff like that. If you guys have done them, then I believe the birthday cake is the only item you're going to get. No XP, just a fun little holiday event. And once, once again, if you guys haven't checked out this entire place, make sure to check it out because it is very, very cool. Guys, that's it for the video today. Thank you guys all for watching. Happy early birthday to Old School RuneScape. Can we hit 2,006 likes? To mi no, I don't want 2,000. Can we, can we hit six likes on this video to celebrate Old School's sixth birthday? Thank you guys all for watching. Hope to see you next time. Have a good one. And peace. Wow.